there's a completely new category of tool to fight pandemics. Hi, I'm Po Shen Lo. I'm a math professor at Carnegie Mellon University, the national coach of the US International Math Olympiad team, and a social entrepreneur. I founded a website for teaching math and science that has about half a million visitors every month. Normally I work on math and education, but in March, after the outbreak of COVID-19 caused a lot of our daily life to be disrupted, I started thinking about how to use the kind of math that I work on, network theory, to try to control pandemics. Today, I want to talk about a breakthrough, a new approach to trying to fight a pandemic which uses apps, but in a way that's completely different from what everyone else has done, including Apple and Google. Those other approaches, unfortunately, weren't aligned with natural human incentives and didn't work very well. I want to tell you today about an approach that does. The idea is actually a very simple paradigm shift. Normally, when, you, when, you, when we conduct contact tracing, normally we go and find every positive case and we go and try to find out who was directly around them and we ask those people to quarantine and isolate. Our idea is to do something quite different. For every positive case, tell everybody how many relationships away that positive case was from them. This very simple flip from were you exposed or not to, oh, were you three relationships away from that positive case actually makes a huge difference when it comes to incentives. But first I want to explain a little bit about what that might mean. When I say the number of relationships you are away, we need to maintain anonymity, so we can't tell you who those are. But those are supposed to correspond to things like maybe it's your co-worker's husband's best friend, or something like that. By the way, that's the kind of way that COVID might get to you. It gets to you through these relationships. And once we report how many relationships away something else is, how, how, how many relationships the case is, you actually can visualize this in the same kind of way that you visualize a weather radar. This is actually what we show in the app that we have. So I'm going to show this as a, as a screenshot of the actual app that we have. Inside this app, we animate over time, as, as the date is changing, how many COVID cases there are and how far away they are from you. For example, if you see a bar of some height that's telling you how many people have COVID, and the, the height is at a particular degree of separation of that connection. And that degree is telling you how many relationships away it is. For example, if there were a bar at degree one, if there was a bar at the degree one, what that would mean is that you spent time with someone and that person unfortunately got COVID. If you had a bar at degree two, that would mean that you spent time with someone, that person spent time with someone else, and that other person got COVID. Now, the value of being able to see something like this is that if you can see the disease striking closer and closer to you before it gets to you, you actually can do something about it. This is empowering. This is actually the first intervention that lets you, the app user, actually reduce your chance of getting sick. Because if you see a threat coming, you can do something about it. That's actually the similar principle of radar and warfare, which completely transformed warfare as well. And in fact, the fact that this thing lets you do something about it, lets you increase your chance of protection, is unique to this approach. Because if we go and compare the way that everyone had tried to do this before, they were actually only making apps that would ask you to quarantine to protect other people from you if you got exposed to COVID. So actually, this approach that we've made is the first one in the world where it actually helps the app user. And that alignment of incentives is essential. Now, this could actually make an enormous impact in how we control not only COVID, but all of, the, all of the diseases that strike humankind, which transmit through close contact, person to person close contact. We think it's absolutely essential to put a tool like this out into the world right now because of two things. The first is that this could actually change the way that humanity responds to all pandemics. I mean, imagine if there was this kind of a radar, you would have a new way of fighting disease called self-defense. If I see a disease coming, I will take some actions. And what might those actions look like? They might look like things like keeping greater distance from other people, 
maybe wearing a better mask, like an N95 mask, to really protect me against any particles coming my way. Or if I have the luxury to decide to work from home, I might decide to do that at that time. Or if I'm a person who works outside, I might keep a greater distance from other people when I see them in public. But all of these are minor things, not minor, but all of these are things that I could do that won't disrupt my life quite so much as having to quarantine for 14 days. And so this is a, a totally new tool which could actually change the way that we respond to pandemics. Maybe 50 years in the future, people will look back and say, how did those people survive without the radar? They just randomly walked around and got sick. Well, we want to make a world where you can actually directly protect yourself. And in that sense, this appeals to incentives, which could actually make this thing take off. Actually, from even a game theoretic perspective, if you think about that side, our tool is the one which has the incentive for people to install because it directly helps them, as opposed to something that relies on people's altruism. But the second point, which is also important, is why now? Well, it's because right now we're also in, in the midst of a terrible pandemic, which is claiming lots and lots of lives. And unfortunately, the tools that other people have made are not working. I'm referring specifically to the other apps, because sometimes people say, well, there's already other apps. Why do you need to have another app? The answer is because this is a completely different kind of app. And there are actually three points on which this new approach has order of magnitude improvements over what's going on right now. And when I say going on right now, I'm referring to the standard app that anonymously asks you to quarantine. Actually, that's the first point. Unfortunately, apps that anonymously ask you to quarantine have a fundamental issue. The issue is that if two people are in the same room and six feet apart for 15 minutes and one has COVID and the other doesn't, the probability that that infection jumps is not anywhere close to 100%. In fact, it's well under 10%, many people estimate. In a situation like that, if somebody is only having a 10% chance of getting infected, but they're being told to quarantine in a non-enforceable anonymous way, unfortunately, people won't listen. Uh, this is just not compatible. And so that's the first problem. It's that somehow if you try to make an app based on anonymous driving quarantine, it actually most likely will not cause action even when it asks people to quarantine. That's a major flaw. Whereas what we're trying to do is we're trying not to tell you to quarantine, but we're trying to give you the insight that something's coming close and maybe just maybe you might want to do something to protect yourself. And we know from the history of people buying enough toilet paper for the next 10 years that if there is a reason to protect oneself, actually people will go, through quite, go to quite great lengths in order to do so. So we actually feel that there's an order of magnitude difference between what people will do to protect themselves versus what they will do if they have to quarantine with a less than 10% chance of actually being infected. That's one. The second major order of magnitude improvement is that with all of the other apps, it has been discovered that when somebody tests positive, they actually don't enter into their app to tell the app that they tested positive. That's how all of these work, including ours, in order to protect anonymity. So what we did is we actually made it possible so that during the contact tracing process, if you get contact traced, well, if, if somebody gets contact traced, that person can also enter into their app on, on, on our system that they are a contact traced contact. Now, in our system uniquely, this is useful. Because if, for example, you discover that somebody two relationships from you was contact traced to be a contact, well then, there's a positive case within three. So if there's a positive case within three, that's useful enough information for you to know to be careful. And two, three, they're close enough. Close enough in the sense that it's just as useful of a signal, even though it came in through the contact traced contact. Now, with a contact trace contact, this suddenly increases the amount of signal that you could potentially get. Because in our app, you don't only get the signals being reported by people who are positive, but also by the people who are contact traced. That's an order of magnitude improvement. And the last one is, unfortunately, there aren't enough tests going around to go and find all of the positive cases. And also there are a lot of asymptomatic people who are spreading the disease. Unfortunately, with the old method, those things just don't produce any signals that lead to caution. With our method, because you can see it coming on a chart, because you can see these positive signals coming on a chart, even if not all of them come, you can still see that some fraction of them are coming, and that's enough to give you warning because you have this long range early warning out to 12 degrees of separation. 
So we use bigger numbers in order to get more signals that can help you take caution even if some of the signals aren't being detected. So that in a nutshell is what we've done. I would actually love to chat more with you or anyone that you know if you find any of these intriguing. Actually the claim we're making is that this is something which compared to the present has three order of magnitude improvements, also has the potential to transform how humanity responds to every pandemic, and if we use now as the time that we deploy it, we could potentially let everybody get used to the notion of a radar, learn how to use it, and in the future, with an even more deadly disease, when there's a worse disease than COVID that comes along, everyone will know, quick, turn on the radar, and then we'll be able to stamp out those diseases long before vaccines. We've already seen what happens when there's something even just like COVID. We've been paralyzed as an as a international society due to the fact that we are unable to handle this, and we've just been waiting for the vaccines. Whereas if we give everyone the radar, this would be another way of empowering everyone to avoid diseases. There are a few things that we actually still need right now. This is a groundbreaking idea, which we have turned into an actual app. But unfortunately, most people in the world don't know about it. We are looking for partners for deployment. If you happen to know any people who run universities or school systems or cities, counties, states, countries, any of those, or any, any organization which influences uh, these kinds of large-scale deployments, we'd love to help to deploy. The second thing is that actually this, this idea and this approach appears to have very significant scientific merit. I've actually spent a lot of my time now talking to epidemiologists, computer scientists, people all across the spectrum. And this is actually a new approach which could change history. And if you happen to know any people in the scientific realm, I'd love to have a conversation with them to discuss the pure science of it. We're trying to elevate this idea to the top of the scientific community as efficiently as possible. And lastly, if you happen to have any access to people who can help to provide funding, that's actually also a limiting factor because the history of this project is quite unusual. Actually, at the beginning when I got this idea to build something like this and to use network theory to fight disease, uh, I wasn't able to find anyone to fund an idea just in the idea stage, so I actually funded it myself at the beginning. I happened to be a social entrepreneur, and I had a line of online math courses where uh, people seemed to like learning math from me, and that had earned some money. Well, at this point, it hasn't earned any money, because we've used everything from that to go and build this for the world. But after this app became the very first Bluetooth COVID app on the USA, Google, and Apple app stores as free downloads, at that point, this attracted philanthropic donations, and we were lucky enough to receive a rather significant sum from multiple donors uh, through our affiliated 501c3 that enabled us to keep making further progress on this. We're fortunate enough that some governments are already taking us seriously enough to have conversations, and those may soon turn into the kinds of contracts that could help to, help to cause this innovation to keep going forward. However, it is, of course, extremely useful to make sure that we can bridge whatever time it takes in order to prove the efficacy in the real world and to change the course of history. So if there is funding that, that, that you are aware of or that you know any people who might, or if you know any people who might have access to funding, we are actually also raising funding in order, donation funding, in order to be able to drive this thing forward. Ultimately, what we're seeking to do, and why I'm so motivated to do this, is we're seeking to give humanity a new tool to fight all kinds of diseases. This could be as transformational as the invention of radar in warfare. This is the war on disease, and we're all on the same side. Thank you.